So part of the reason that Gödel and Church and Turing were looking at this problem in the first place was because of a problem posed by David Hilbert uh, right around 1900, which was essentially the question of whether you could automate mathematics. Is there a step-by-step -step procedure where you start with a mathematical statement and at the end of the step-by-step -step procedure it will either tell you whether it's true or false and do it correctly. Um, and this was why they wanted to develop a formal notion of what it means for something to be computable so that in fact they could show that mathematics was not automatable, it wasn't computable. Um, and the problem that they used to do this uh, is now known as the halting problem. Uh, so this is a problem which itself is about algorithms or Turing machines. So the input here will be an algorithm A, by which I mean a description of the algorithm A uh, in some formal language, either as a Turing machine or say code in your favorite programming language, and some input X to that algorithm. And the output, the desired output, is it should say yes if when you run the program A on input X, uh, this program eventually stops or halts uh, and the output should be no otherwise. Okay. And it's going to turn out that this problem actually cannot be solved by any algorithm. And the argument for this is a kind of snake biting its own tail kind of argument. Um, and um, once you see it, it seems obvious and then five minutes later you're going to be scratching your head again and you should just know that's the experience that everyone has and in fact until like the third or the fifth time you see this proof you won't really get used to it. Um, so say um, suppose that there were a solution to this problem. So suppose H is itself an algorithm which um, correctly solves the halting problem. Meaning that when you give it a and x, um, it outputs yes or no according to the halting problem. And we want h itself to always halt. So it makes this output in a finite number of steps. Okay. And this consideration is pretty crucial. Right? If you allowed h to run forever, well, okay, you know, H could just simulate A on X. And if A doesn't halt, then H isn't going to halt either. But then H never really got to make its output, right? H is running forever. So when we say that an algorithm solves the halting problem, the fact that the, algor the algorithm H itself, that that algorithm always halts, is a crucial piece of this puzzle. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to find an algorithm A, or A0, where H gets it wrong. Okay. Uh, and this is where we get the kind of snake biting its own tail argument. So this is reminiscent of Russell's paradox and set theory or um, the barber of Seville, uh, which I will recount as the, the um, there's a barber in Seville and the barber um, cuts the hair of every person in the town who doesn't cut their own hair. And then the question is, does the barber cut his own hair? I'll let you ponder that for a minute, um, but hopefully by the end of this, you'll see that this argument is essentially the same thing. All right, we're gonna build an algorithm A0 where H gets it wrong, whether A0 halts. So A0 is going to take as input an algorithm A, by again, by which we mean you know, the description of an algorithm in some formal programming language. And A0 works as follows, it runs H, right? H is a valid program, so certainly we can use H as a subroutine in A0. It runs H on AA, um, meaning it's treating A here both as the program code and as the input X that's going to get fed into A. So um, if H of AA says yes, then A0 is going to enter a simple loop and loop forever. Okay. And if H of AA says no, then um, this algorithm is just going to stop. Okay, so um, right, let's let's just review carefully what's happening here before we 
quite get to the part where it bites its own tail. So H of AA here should say yes if A running on input A stops. Right? So, um, all right, and now why is it that we want to show that H of A0, A0 is wrong? Okay. Um, so here again, we're running a program uh, where we're treating A0 both as its code and as its input. A0 itself, the program uses H as a subroutine, but that's not a problem because this is just some other program, right? So you're feeding programs into programs into programs, but that's fine. Okay, so what happens here? H of A0, A0 is supposed to say correctly whether A0 halts on input A0. So what does this look like? A0 of A0 says if H of A0, A0 says yes, then loop forever. And if it says no, then stop. Okay, so A0 on input A0 says if H of A0, A0, right? So H says that A0 should halt on input A0, but then A0 does exactly the opposite. It loops forever. Okay. And in the other scenario, if H of A0, A0 says no, then H is claiming that A0 actually um, doesn't halt on input A0, but then A0 halts. So whatever A0 does, H gets it wrong. Okay. Um, so this shows that there's no algorithm which itself always halts, which solves the halting problem. Um, and again, this is sort of the cleanest mathematical formulation, but um, their motivation was to show that there was no algorithm that could automate mathematical theorem proving, and that actually follows essentially as a consequence of this. Um, the other thing to notice here is you might think that the reason the halting problem is hard is because when an algorithm doesn't halt, it can do it in crazy ways, right? A very simple way of not halting is you just enter an infinite loop and you do the same thing over and over again, right? But you could also have algorithms that never halt, but they do some crazy behavior that never ever repeats itself and you know, is totally unpredictable. That actually is not the problem here, right? Notice that the algorithm that we constructed where H gets it wrong just has a very simple looping behavior. Right? I just said loop forever, by which I meant enter some simple infinite loop. Um, the problem somehow, part of what makes solving the halting problem impossible, is that if you try and do it, you never know when you've gotten to the limiting behavior, right? or if the limiting behavior is going to occur. So obviously, if you see an algorithm repeat itself, you know you've entered an infinite loop. But the issue is you don't know whether an algorithm is ever going to get to the point where it repeats itself. Right. So it's not just about sort of how crazy algorithms can be um, in the limit, you know, how they can loop forever. It's kind of about how an algorithm can fool you into thinking that, oh, maybe it's going to halt sometime in the future or maybe it's not, and your inability to tell.